Hello everyone. Um, this is going to be my third video. This is uh, going to be kind of a follow-on to the um, Dell BIOS update uh, video that I did before. Um, this one it was a new project that I started. I uh, I picked up one of these um, uh, R210 uh, twos. It's II at the end. I guess it was the next version of it. Um, but uh, I, I wanted to make it into my new PFSense router and um, so you know rack mountable it's got all the horsepower it needs probably a little bit of overkill but I got a really good deal on eBay uh, for it and this is what it looks like here um, so it didn't come with a a slim drive I, you know I can pick one up and install it but uh, um, didn't have one at the time so I, you know my first steps were to you know do what i did before when i got the r710 was to to do the uh as many updates as i can before i put it actually into production so i had it off to the side um you know before installing the pfsense operating system or anything and i was trying to uh do the update so i did what i did before and uh you know went straight to the dell website uh well first to google and um you know just dell firmware iso you get the um, Dell support page same knowledge base that I used before for the R710 um, you know you scroll down you find your uh, version which is the PowerEdge uh, R210 2 is in the 11th generation as well as the 710 so made it super easy to find um, you know downloaded that package uh, that ISO uh, same as I did with the other one and um, um, you know put it onto a uh, USB thumb drive using Rufus it's it's only I think it's you know 1.5 gig for that file so not not very large um, so I had a, just a, an 8 gig thumb drive that I was using and we'll get to more th uh, thumb drive information here in a minute <laughs> that gets really important but uh, you know it uh, it ran uh, like the R710 updates did uh, and then it broke just like the R710 so you s use the same procedure you just use the mount uh, commands that um, uh, are on the website uh, that I pointed out before in the other video and um, you know you mount the uh, USB thumb drive and uh, run the script and then it uh, went through and it, it found a couple of things to update um, and it said that uh, it was going to update the BIOS as well because this particular unit was on I don't know if it was the first BIOS, but it was on uh, version 111, uh, so so damn near 1.0. Um, but and it said it did it, went through the process, rebooted the machine, you know, and you want to you want to run that uh, update several times because it'll catch things uh, each time you do it, and some of them are, are iterative. Um, so you run it a couple of times. Well, every time I I ran it. Um, it kept uh, kept coming up and and it would show um on the boot screen for the r uh, r two ten that it was still on one 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 even though it said that it was doing the bios update uh so I thought that was a little bit strange uh but it did catch a few things and and um I just couldn't get it to to do the bios update um so uh what I had decided to do was well you know i I know that sometimes with firmware revisions. It's hard to go from a, a 1.0, you know, to a, a version three. You know, it's it, there's there's too many things in between sometimes, uh, and that can be true with you know uh, BIOS updates for a, a motherboard. Um, so I thought, well, maybe that's true when it comes to to the firmware on these kinds of things as well. So uh, what I did, I went to the actual support page for the R210. Uh, you know, this is the one where you can actually choose. Um, uh, what type of update you want so I picked the BIOS uh, NA for the operating system because you want something that you can uh, actually boot and this 290 is what the um, uh, ISO boot disk was actually trying to to do um, so and it wasn't working so um, handy little feature they have here on only on certain files is you can click on this older versions and I went back here to, to 2012 and I went to I didn't you know didn't want to do the next 131 and let me get at least to a, try a 2 2.0 so I did a 205 file and uh, um, went to that page and, and that one actually brings you here 
and uh, so good thing that file is not an app uh, it actually is for the BIOS as well uh, so you can you can um, put in your thumb drive um, you know throw it into Rufus again and uh, do a free DOS as the the operating system that you put onto the thumb drive and once Rufus is done putting that on there um, you know you mount the thumb drive again into your operating system and you you uh, uh, you know copy this BIOS uh, update file over to it so uh, all of that went well put it into the to the machine um, you know get it booted up and uh, uh, run the the command run the executable there in in FreeDOS and it attempts to do it but then it fails it gave me this uh, you know strange error that said it was a uh, um, wasn't compatible it called it a, a T210 uh, II and uh, so I thought that was a little strange too so of course uh, go go for a little more googling um, won't update from 111 is what I searched there and I, I love finding these ones that say solved and um, you know it turns out this this guy right here says well you know you can use the BIOS file he, he happened to use a different version of it but he said there's a couple of uh, um, switches that you can add to the end of it there's a, 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 a tack wipe clean uh, space tack force type um, and you add those on when you run that BIOS update and it will force it to actually use that file and that worked um, so it went through the process it wrote to the uh, wrote, wrote the firmware on you can see it doing it visually uh, on the screen uh, in DOS and then uh, once it was done uh, rebooted the um, the R210 and the, the BIOS actually did come up with a, a 2.0.5 um, so once that was done I reran um, the ISO or the ISO file update, um, the one that runs in, in Linux essentially, and um, that one caught the BIOS being 205 and then proceeded to update it to the very latest version. So, kind of kind of splitting it between that two, getting it off of the one series, uh, actually worked and, and and let me get to the final version. Um, so you'd think that that would be kind of the the end of it, uh, but uh, it was kind of driving me nuts because I I, I it's my fault. Um, in the other video in the R710, uh, one of the updates that it did was to the uh, USC the I think it's a unified service configurator, um, and uh, in there you can do the platform update. So once you've once you've got that thing updated enough you can actually uh, have it go to the Dell uh, FTP site and actually pull the updates and, and pretty much do it all from within that software. It was super handy. Um, I just thought that this thing was so old that it wasn't catching that update or it wasn't you know allowing it to do it. So uh, had to had to keep digging into this a little bit. Long story short with that one um, is I learned something and I'm going to pass that on to you about doing that. Um, but uh, Long story short, the, the problem that I had with, with that, the reason why it wasn't allowing me to do it, and it set it right there on the, the main page of the, the Unified Service Configurator when you bring it up, uh, is that I don't have the uh, iDRAC uh, Express card installed. Uh, with these particular units, you got to do two cards uh, to get iDRAC um, you know, Express. you got to do first, and then you actually have to put the Enterprise card on top if you want some of the other features that I'm more used to on the R710. Um, so a little bit of a learning curve there, but in, in doing all of that, trying to get this working, uh, I was working with, uh, you know, somebody else who had, who was having an issue and he pointed me towards, um, this video, um, this, this guy here, Rob, uh, Willis, uh, he goes through the process of, um, doing the unified, uh, service configurator updates to an R610, um, and, uh, you know in that process at the end of it you know kind of here in the middle of the video he also goes into you know if that's not working for you another option and uh, uh, it, it kind of it, it interested me because I thought for sure there had to be some sort of a um, uh, you know a, a live CD that Dell could use so that you could run some of these Linux updates there's too many you know Linux versions out there that that you know for that not to be possible well turns out it does exist um, so you can um, search for Dell live image and uh, they have a CentOS um, 
basically live disk that you can boot into and uh, run some of these updates and that's what the guy in this video does um, but you know he makes it look super easy uh, because everything he does he does it the first time and it just works well you know Murphy's Law never nothing ever turns out the way it's supposed to um, so I, I go through that process and um, you know you you go here and you find this support live image uh, disk ISO and you use Rufus and you, you burn that and then uh, one of the things that he also said is is there's the SUU it's it's a, a, a Dell's um, pretty much this uh, server update utility well after you found the live image uh, which is a uh, probably 1.5 gig you know ISO file um, then what he does is is after he's got that mounted uh, in Rufus or you know uh, created with uh, the the ISO burning uh, software Rufus um, he leaves that mounted and then he downloads this uh, uh, server update utility um, which I guess is a, a, a disk all on its own that could be run but what he does is he he actually downloads this ISO file which is you know it's nine gigs so it, it, it'll take a minute to, to get that and to copy all the files over and then he mounts it in uh, Windows 10 and then copies all the file to uh, files to a folder inside of um, you know the the USB thumb drive he's already created with the other um, you know live image on there the, the support live image um, so it, he kind of nests it inside there well I made the mistake uh, of using you you know I got all these these thumb drives and I thought well that's 10 gig plus the other one you know so this one here's a 128 gigabyte um, thumb drive but um, it, you know I, I had problems and I, I couldn't get it to work and and uh, you know and then I eat various little gremlins here and there so uh, come to find out I, I, I did have a USB 2.0 thumb drive instead of 3.0 and this one's 16 gigs, so it will hold both the, uh, uh, you know, support live image operating system, and it'll hold the the 10 gig um, uh, server update utility files as well, because you copy all of those over all on the same disk. Um, because it, you know you would think that you could run the uh, the operating system off of one and then plug in another one, which which I did using this little cord, because you can't get them side by side. Um, you know you'd think that that would work well in some of the release notes it warns you that you can't run um, the update utility while you have things that are mounted right so uh, other drives that are mounted in, in media and whatnot um, so that that I, I took that warning pretty seriously and, and what you know the guy had done on the video was he put it all on one so it was it was all part of the operating system um, you know file structure that was already there um, so again, trying to make the long story short, use a, a USB 2.0 drive, um, use Rufus again to mount that ISO. Um, in Rufus up at the top, you can actually choose uh, whether it uses the, the GUID, uh, GUID, um, I think it's like a, a Linux partition, uh, or you can choose the MBR, Master Boot Record, uh, that, that, you know, normal Windows uh, drives use and and it, you select the MBR with BIOS and uh, or U, uh, EFI uh, so that covers both of the types of um, BIOS you know essentially that that the the Dell servers here can run and uh, gives you a couple of options um, and, and you'll need them so once you have uh, you, you know you select that MBR one and then you go down and you select your ISO file so what happens though is when you select the ISO file uh, to burn um, it'll change that value back at the top back to what it thinks it should be the default which it changes it back to that GUID one so lesson learned you know uh, use Rufus use USB 2.0 um, select the ISO image first then select the master boot record with uh, um, uh, UAFI and BIOS and then um, that actually worked I mean the um, doing what the guy does in the video became possible at that point so I think either the large drive or it being USB 3.0 um, 
you know caused issues because um, I got another one that was USB 3.0 I couldn't get that to work either um, so you know it, in the end it, it did um, end up working and I was able to run it exactly like he does in the video and um, but the only problem was is there was no updates available I had already updated this thing as much as possible so then that was when I uh, finally learned my lesson that um, you know the the, the IDRAC uh, express card is needed for what I really want out of it um, to get those uh, firmware updates possible through that system so you know this is I think now the the third or the fourth way that you can do firmware updates uh, to these guys and and it's important when you pick that SUU uh, the server update utility that you choose this Linux 64-bit format and this here this version is the one that I use is 18.4 uh, 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 it just came out last month um, you know so if it had anything on there to update it would have done it um, so uh, I think that's it for this one uh, if you got any questions or comments um, you know make sure you like the videos and I'll keep trying to do them um, I've still got some lessons learned that I, I really want to put out there from the R710 and Proxmox and uh, doing PCIe uh, pass-through and I'll, I'll get to those but uh, I think what's going to sidetrack me is I is a, a 10 gigabit e uh, project I picked up a couple of these cards and I'm going to try to create a, a backbone for my uh, NAS machines I've got NAS for free servers here um, that I do all my file shares with and I'm going to see if I can't uh, make a machine with uh, Vio S um, to be which is uh, that box sitting back there on top of the other one I'm gonna I'm put a couple of these cards in that one and uh, in my other machines and see if I can't get them to work with uh, a 10 gig backbone that way I can maybe do uh, you know kind of a, a local SAN and uh, at least be able to transfer my files back and forth uh, rather quickly so I'm super excited about that one um, but uh, again let me know and uh, I'll try to keep making more of these